I want to welcome Omer Baruchai, uh, the CEO of Eviation. Uh, Eviation is a fantastic company that I saw at the Paris Air Show. Please sit down. Um, and I think, well, we'll talk a bit about what you guys do, but uh, Eviation is, well, we have a video. Why don't we just take a look at that for two seconds? Now that's a handsome plane, right? It is a very <laughs> handsome plane. So this is Alice, the all-electric uh, business and commuter aircraft. Um, it really has a vision of transforming commercial flights into electric-powered commercial flights. Let me introduce also um, Omer Bar Yochai, who is the founder and CEO of, of, uh, of Aviation. He is a member of NASA's On-Demand Mobility Working Group, as well as e-aviation committees of the Federal Aviation, which is the administration, which is the FAA, and the General Aviation Manufacturers Association. Importantly, he recently moved his family from Rome uh, to Israel to really back, I guess, local talent. How are you? I'm um, doing great. Thanks for having us. Uh, recently, it's kind of uh, funny because it's five years ago, but uh, we've been doing something to replace that old thing over here. <laughs> so, so, that's really, so, so it so takes so a while. So, so he here's the question. When will Virgin Atlantic actually buy one of your planes? When you come to your senses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And more, and more specifically? Um, I think the, the interesting part of this revolution and we're we're actually it's kind of funny we're two israelis having a conversation in english about the future of aviation here in israel who would have thought exactly but or in um, england they would say who'd have thunk <laughs> <laughs> um i think the important aspect of this is this electric aviation is possible right now electric aviation that takes you from london to new york not quite so it really matters what do you care about, but if you look at the regional market, which is the market we're looking at right now, if you want to go anything up to 650 miles, and that's quite far if you think of it, uh, you can do it whenever we finish certification. So for Virgin Atlantic, you know, we fly long-haul planes, uh, big planes, Airbus, Boeings. In our lifetime, will we be able to fly across the Atlantic with an electric powered plane? We really well, hope so, but is that realistic? You just announced that I'm the founder of uh, Aviation. That's true, but I'm actually the co-founder of Aviation. And in the crowd, there is a very, very good friend, pilot, and co-founder of Yvtsi Don over there. <laughs> and if you'd ask him, he would say, let's fly the Atlantic when? Two years from now? first one to cross the Atlantic full electric? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, actually, Avi, first okay, of all, thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and what should we call this competition? The Fly E cross. The, the Virgin Atlantic <laughs> electric cross of the Atlantic. I think you're better in technology. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Okay, I'll confer with my team on how to call this thing, uh, and I've got a few people to just, okay, but that's interesting. I actually like the idea. Yeah, so, sorry for that, but that, no, that's no, exactly no. the point. We can do this sooner than people think. Aviv was pitching this because he knows we're gonna win. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and I would and, like and to and say one thing regarding this issue. There is issue of uh, energy with batteries. So electric to cross, more than four or five hours is very hard today with the energy density. So you should not try to do the impossible. You should try to do what is feasible to change people move distances. 50% of people buy tickets, it's two billion people a year, are flying less than 500 kilometers. So you can... Okay, so actually, so, and, and now I'm, I'm gonna go a bit geeky here for the aviation buffs in the room. So there's a big, you know, first of all, I want to say that, you know, for Virgin Atlantic, becoming uh, as sustainable as possible, as you know, is, is part of, parcel of what we do. For us, business is a force for good, is essential. Becoming the most loved tra travel company, you cannot do if you're not a responsible custodian of the environment. But there is a question here. Hybrid, so just like in the cars, should you go hybrid, which some of your competitors are doing? or all electric, which kind of terrifies a lot of people, even they have range fear when they drive. Surely, would they take a plane? I think, first of all, it's, it's a very, very interesting question for the aviation geek. 
The passenger couldn't care less, and I'll tell you why. When you fly me with your Virgin Atlantic somewhere, and I am an aviation geek, I don't know which plane's going to be until very, very late in the game. Is it a Boeing? Is it an Airbus? I don't know. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to sit here. But the you know we have fuel on board. Yes, but if I was to tell you, and I had that same conversation with literally the administrator of the FAA, if I was to tell you, you know what? I have this great idea. Let's take this flammable, explodable liquid, put it in tanks in the wings, and then blow it up like 900 times a minute somewhere on the plane, and then use this to spin something in order to fly, you would kick me out the door. But this is what we do every day, which batteries are literally the safest way to fly you can imagine. So I, I want to share a story with you, and this is a real story. We had a VS-138 flight, um, August the 4th, I think it was, and one, uh, we celebrated this event because we, you know, s safety and security of our people and customers is the number one priority for any yep. airline, regardless if it's Virgin Atlantic or any otherwise. But in one of the seats in the upper class, somebody brought a Samsung. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Even a, a battery pack log dis dislodged, went into the seat, and combusted, and we had to do a mayday, mayday. These are very, very large lithium-ion batteries. In the sky. 6.3 metric tons is the maximum takeoff weight of the plane, yeah. out of which 3.8 tons are a battery. That's a big, big, big battery. But there is one quintessential difference. When you build a system, if your cell phone was fuel powered, I have no doubt it would have a bigger problem around that seat. The thing is, if you build something in billions per year, and it needs to stay on the table and be charged and then maybe be dropped every once in a while, that's about it. You can get away with a lot in terms of uh, safety. When you build, and you guys know this, everybody who's into uh, aviation, when you build a true commercial aviation product, the rigorous testing of this product is second to none. FAA and YASA and any other regulatory body building the infrastructure that allows you to build a product out of it and to use this in disguise over people with people inside is exactly the reason why we're looking at a video of this plane and not flying it yet. We've been developing this for four and a half years. We will be developing this for the next three years just to get certification. That's an eight year process and honestly if we finish it in eight years it's miraculous. Exactly. People say it's a miracle. I say it's a miracle a week for th four or five years. Which, which leads me, you know, I think it's really interesting for the crowd to understand just what's the roadmap? When can I buy for our, you know, we have a new company. Oh, sorry. We, we've, new, as you yeah. know, we invested <laughs> in, in, in Flybe and we're going to call it Virgin Connect, which connects passengers into Heathrow and Manchester. It is Europe's largest regional carrier. I think we mentioned that when yeah. we, we're preparing. When can I buy a plane? That will First of all, as I said, you need to come to your senses and get into the order book. You, uh, you told me the order book was full. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of full. I'm assuming after today, if I want them in, I'm in. Uh, we'll negotiate, but <laughs> let's put it this way. Um, our effort right now, in light of, uh, of recent life in the, in the world, is America first. And the reason is very much like what Shai mentioned before. Um, the aviation industry happens first and foremost in the lower 48 states of the U.S., we're building in the States, we're certifying in the States. Our first three customers are going to be in the States. And honestly, we also want them to have a uniquely successful launch. We're holding this by the hand. This is the first aircraft of its How kind. How many seats? Uh, we're nine seats plus two crew. So Range? Uh, we're doing 650 miles on a, on a charge. Um, but if you look at our customers, in most cases, they operate very much like the company you will make out of uh, Flybe. And I believe that your longest leg is going to be anywhere between three and 400 miles. Actually, people do not fly 600 miles in this uh, relatively small Yeah, Virgin Connect, actually, the average length of a flight is 55 minutes. And there you go. So we can do this easily. The question is, when do we cert with YASA, or will Brexit break this up as well? Yeah. So honestly, there are a lot of risks in taking this product to market. We're trying to hedge them as, as safely as possible because... We were talking about brands and uh, startups and, and the way things work. We want to survive this. So um, I'm going to really go geek out. Um, <laughs> infrastructure, right? We know that people would love to have more electric cars, but they don't know where to charge. They don't understand what happens if they don't drive their car for two weeks. Yeah. You know, and, and these are airports 
you know, even just changing yeah. the fuel in an, you know, aviation fuel yeah. in an airport is a big, big, big uh, deal, as we know. How are we going to get the infrastructure in First place all, to support you? As you said, it's a big deal. Everything about this project is a huge deal. When we started this together, I think our, our pitch was something like, uh, hey, guys, we need $200 million of your, uh, of your money and roughly 10 years until we crank the first dollar back. And honestly, that's a big maybe as well. So, so it wasn't the best pitch. <laughs> I think everybody would agree. But uh, the infrastructure and ecosystem around this is also huge. I think that what people forget, and in many cases when we talk about the transition to electric, we think of an electric car. What people forget is that if I climb into my Tesla or my uh, Nissan Leaf or whatnot, no engineers nowhere really knows how far am I going to go? How cold is it outside? Is it a big, am I going to stop for a charge or not? In a plane, it's very different. You have planners. When you take off, you know exactly where you're going. You know exactly where you're going to land. You know what the weather is like. And in these ranges, you actually know what the weather is like. And at the end of the game, you can really pick and choose the missions you can take in the beginning until that infrastructure ramps up. So that's what we're doing. We're going to clients that have this huge fleet, hundreds of planes, but relatively small uh, footprint on the ground, operating out of but six, surely you seven, or ten. Yeah, but surely runways. you would start with just one airport to one airport, no? Uh, honestly, no. No. We're, well, you said, I think it says outside, dream big. Yeah. So we are. Okay, dream <laughs> big. So you're competing with two amazing, complicated, big, established players. Why wouldn't you team up either with Boeing or with Airbus, or with both of them, maybe Rolls-Royce and Pratt and & Whitney and others. But it just, you know, 200 million, is it really going to cut it? Well, first of all, no. Uh, we believe that uh, going to actual production will take much more, and uh, we think we can pull this off. But if you're really asking about the, the undercurrent here, why not? I would say two things. First of all, personally, and obviously with my uh, team of insane uh, co-founders and investors, we would much rather dress up as pirates and plug in some <laughs> uh, big Boeing on a runway before we do anything uh, with these guys. They're slow, they're heavy, they're uh, hedging their bets. They will go there, but they need someone to kick the industry in the butt, and we're trying to be that someone. And, and, and speaking about pirates and branding, your plane is stunning, yeah. stunning. How do you achieve this quality of design in Israel. Israel has never manufactured, other than a Susita, as far as I remember, anything in aviation. Oh, we have a tank. We never manufactured a plane. We, all, we got close, but never did so. Where's the inspiration? Is it done here in this country? Well, you just had uh, Checkpoint Strauss and, and Wix uh, on this couch, right? So there's plenty of uh, amazing, there are plenty of amazing things that we can do here. I literally, as you said, I, I got my family back from a very nice, safe job. Uh, in Europe to, to build this company here because I think that there are two things that we do very, very different. Um, one, we're not afraid to fail. And when we started this, this was a failure on top of a failure in the power of a failure, give or take. When we move forward from that, finding top talent and making them believe they can reach the stars, this is not afraid to fail, filters down all the way through the organization. So you bring this designer in and you tell them, hey, I know all you've designed so far is this or that, and you did some, uh, some development work, but you're super, super talented, and we're going to design a full plane together, the works, from the ground up. In most cases, in a corporate structure that's already built, you'll get someone running out of your, uh, of your room. In Israel, that'd be a sure, when do we start? <laughs> and, and I think that's the kind of spirit you need in the beginning to achieve something uh, impossible. But if I want to uh, relate back to your sister's comment about this place being, uh, or should be, startup nation for everybody, I would say that the next move and where we are having trouble seeing, uh, seeing Israel develop uh, aggressively enough into is the shift from that great idea, top talent team, even some proper venture capital available for making something happen to manufacturing, to long-term sustainable manufacturing and jobs. So I want to open up to the, to the audience for a few questions. But before I do that, so I love the idea of the, the competition, and I, I really mean it. So, and we're thinking about things that we can do as Virgin Atlantic to actually promote sustainability. And yes, we buy the best planes, and, and, and we are committed to sustainable aviation fuels. But you maybe said the youngest and greenest, right? Yep, so absolutely. The youngest and greenest fleet in the sky uh, by 2024. But I'm not Richard, but if we can do something for you guys beyond the competition, 
and now that we have this investment in, in Virgin Connect, what would, uh, you know, what can we do for you? First of all, thanks for the question. Um, I think the most significant part for us, and maybe it's not the sexiest, it's like, you know, when people say what's the best, uh, the best thing you can do for Africa is probably building roads. Uh, that's more or less the same that we need. Uh, we need a very, very strong support in the certification process in Europe. And if Flybe could be a potential customer for this, but also say, hey, this is important enough for us to support you guys through the cert process, or actually to double your effort, because today we have dozens of uh, engineers up in the States fixing up everything that needs fixing, flying test flights, doing this right to get this FAA certified. In this volatile environment between Brexit and Europe and whatever happens, we need an anchor that says, if you guys can cert this where we operate, we're in for 100 or however, and, and we will support this. So you need the purchase the, order. The lobbying yeah. and then the purchase order. Purchase orders we have more than we can handle. It's the the problem is we need someone. Support. We need a, an 800-pound gorilla in the room to say this is important well, for us. We, we're not the 800-pound gorilla. You know, there's companies yeah. in aviation 10 and 100 times our size. But I think our voice matters. I think so um, as well. And maybe we can help you out. And, of course, we love the competition. Can we ask uh, anybody in the audience, I'm not giving away a free flight, we already did one. Um, <laughs> so if anybody just has a question that they would like to ask, oh please, if you, Gwen, if you just explain who you are, that'd be great. Uh, Gwen Topham, Transport Correspondent of The Guardian. Um, I understand you're in a different field, but when you talk to people who are doing electric taxis, that got air taxis, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, they often talk about how their planes might transform the way people travel. And I wonder, once you've, if, if and when you produce a, 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 a plane that is cleaner and greener and quieter, do you think it will also transform the way people travel? Or is it just going to slot into Flybe or, or something completely different? I, I think, first of all, thank you for the question. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, first of all, this is the reason we started the company. I believe that if you look back at what transportation does to us, means of transport in that sense, if you were super rich in the early days of the 20th century, you didn't have a horse and carriage, you had a driver, you had white gloves, and you would go on an automobile. It was, its actual name was defined by the lack of horses. It moves autonomously, right, an automobile. Uh, if you're super rich today and you want to go somewhere not too far, if you want to go somewhere too far, you need to fly. Virgin Atlantic is going to be a great experience. Good job. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to go not too far, well, you probably have a driver, he has black gloves, he calls himself a pilot, and you fly your, I don't know, G600 or G something. You fly your business jet and you get there. What if that flight hour on that business jet was not 2000 or $20,000, depending on size, it was 200 I think that changes everything. What made the difference for the car wasn't necessarily the invention. It was the ability of Ford and Benz to build a production line and have people buy this in numbers. What we really make is we democratize the cost of the seat. If the direct operating cost is so low, people that drive today will fly tomorrow. That means if you have a job in Manhattan, why wouldn't you live in Ithaca by the Finger Lakes and fly 40 minutes? You could do it today if you're super rich, but if it's $200, maybe you do it tomorrow. As now, long as it's environmentally friendly. Exactly. Now the question is, what's the most efficient way to move your 162, well, se we're in Israel, right? 75 kilos uh, from one point to the other. <laughs> and that beautiful, slick shape was not designed. That's a classic form follows function situation. That's aerodynamically efficient so we can really get away with this huge battery having so little energy, but still do the range. I think that if, if and when this happens, this will change the way we live. This will change the way the suburb loops looks. And I think, in all honesty, in transportation, and you were referring to the vertical takeoff and landing, we, we see them as heli helicopter replacements. They do the same to helicopters. And that's very true. I mean, I wish we could take off from every uh, rooftop and fly somewhere. It's just too expensive. Helicopters are damn expensive and complicated. So if we look at a problem in transportation, most cases, the solution to this problem is everything. Yes, we need a good solution for the intercity travel. We need a good solution for the intracity travel. We need a good solution for the long haul. We need a good solution for everything. And I think this is really the heart of it. The reason we chose that size category and that specific plane 
is because we believe this is the fastest thing we can bring to market. This is certifiable in today's regulatory environment. This is technologically not just doable, we did it. So all we need to do, in a way, as, as people internally in the company say, oh, now it's just software? <laughs> yeah, well, now it's just certification in manufacturing. <laughs> or scale-up. <laughs> exactly. They call it scale-up in production. Okay, further questions? Please. Uh, we fly at 240 knots at 10,000 feet, and the pressurized version that maybe this guy will care about a bit more uh, flies at uh, 265 at 30,000. Uh, first of all, I wish there was a bullet train in the U.S. because I'm waiting for this plane to survive, literally. But um, what you asked is really important. Today, when we fly a 6, 10, 12-hour flight, going into a billion-dollar facility, standing in line, take your shoes off, put them back on is, is no big deal because it's an hour, two hours, but it's worth it. The problem is, as Aviv mentioned, half of the tickets that people buy are actually for flights that are under 500 kilometers. That means you go... You're going to be in the air for like 35 to 40 minutes, but you were there two hours before. There's just no, there's no better way you're connecting to something else or whatnot. The advantage of keeping this nine seats is the ability to operate out of so many other airports. You want to fly to Elat, why not from Herzliya? Why not from Sdedov? You want to look at this example in the UK? There are so many airports that are being abandoned right now because they were built back in the 50s when the UK had plenty of pilots coming back from the war and everybody thought, hey, you're going to buy a Cessna and fly everywhere. It's going to be easy and fun. Well, it's not easy and fun. It's expensive and regulated and difficult. So we believe we can change that. Question? Oh, sorry, Gil. Uh, we charge, we claim that a minute on the ground is two minutes in the air, mostly because the question of what's empty to full is less relevant. You never get to empty in a plane. You need your 45-minute IFR reserve. Uh, but if you look at a full range flight, 650 miles, uh, that would take us one hour and 15 minutes to charge. So it, it more or less, by the way, this was sized for the turnaround times of the likes. Uh, a normal turboprop or a light jet would turn around roughly the same times. A few more questions if there are for the crowd. Great question. Uh, first of all, there is... Um, Technically, just to ease that specific concern, there is no more radiation in this cabin than any other, uh, mostly because other systems radiate for different reasons, and we measure it, then we're good. Uh, the more important part is that there is a lot of m disinformation out there regarding what kind of radiation do you actually absorb when you fly, and flying at altitude is actually much more pro problematic because the layer of atmosphere above you just gets thinner, and you get so much radiation from space that it really soaks up everything else. So you can have everybody on their phones throughout the flight. It will not move the needle compared to everything else that's happening. So uh, we're no different than anything else. I'm saying it's no, it's no different than the systems that are on the plane today. One la sorry. Great. Um, that, that's a, a fair question, and I'll, I'll give you a small anecdote, if I may. Please. Uh, when we introduced this plane for the first time, we were considered uh, nutcases, basically. Uh, FAA said we were delusional, this will never happen, uh, and investors basically said no. Uh, when we won some, I think it was the Wall Street Journal uh, Startup of the Year Award about, I think it was 2017, um, we went on a roadshow because that's what you do, right? You're a startup. You want to get a lot of money to build this. And then you say, hey, guys, uh, we're building this plane. We promised we will two years ago. Here it's coming. We had a, a drone flying at the time. And then everybody we talked to said, are you kidding? W this is not crazy enough. We need you guys to take off from every rooftop. This could be a drone. The answer is no, it couldn't. And there is... I'm not saying that the effort to build a vertical takeoff and landing machine that's all electric is not a valid one and it will not happen eventually, but it will take dramatically longer than people think. 
the least efficient way you can take something to the air is vertically. And the amount of energy we have in a battery pack is just not there yet. Now, the hybrid, by the way, potentially could do that. But yep. the problem, that, and go, going, going back to, yeah. your, to, your, to your question, the problem with a hybrid system is that in most cases, you would carry so many parts and pieces that would add to the complexity of the system and just will add dead weight. And in a plane, unlike a car, everything matters. Everything is so interconnected that you can't do it. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to build a VTOL machine. I'm saying it's impossible to build a VTOL machine that will be certified in today's regulatory environment and will have a proper real-life mission to take people a long enough distance to make economic sense. So if you're Richard Branson and you decide to build something because you just want to see that it works, uh, you could. If you're Google or uh, Geely, there are some investors that are really heavily invested in these fields, you could. But it's more a proof of concept than it is an actual product that could make something happen. For example, these drones that you're talking about, in most cases they would fly anywhere between 30 and 35 minutes max. To take off with a helicopter, you need 30 minutes of reserve, just so that if something goes wrong, you have somewhere to go. That means that it doesn't matter how much you scale this. This is the energy density of batteries today. You cannot take off and without some regulator saying, oh, reserve, forget it, no problem. Yeah, and I, I uh, want to just echo that. You know, when you think about aviation, this is still aviation. The number one concern is safety and security. We all forget that. We talk about the experience and, and how our cabin crew are amazing and the food. And at the end of the day, they are there for your safety. If this thing doesn't take off well enough, it's, I don't think it's going to succeed. So my last question for you sure. before we summarize. We do a lot of imagine. Yeah. Imagine. So first I want to imagine, the ne since you were there at the Paris Air Show, yeah. and I saw your unbelievable design there. That's why you're here today. Imagine next year, but more important, tell me, imagine five years. Not 50, not, just tell me what it's going to be for you guys. Not world peace, not domination, and imagination. Um, I think that, first of all, I'm trying to say this is not just imagining, that's imagineering. <laughs> you need to engineer this to happen. And I would say that five years from now, we have a certified aircraft. But more importantly, there are hundreds of planes like this out there moving people. That's the goal. Now, maybe it's only 50 because we failed. Yeah. Maybe it's only 500 because everybody wanted 5,000. We couldn't deliver. Um, but I think the important part is bringing a new plane it has the kind of novelty that we have out there to market within the next five years would be a reason to take a day off, maybe an afternoon. And then the next move would be to see this percolate, just go everywhere. And this is what we want to see. We want to see people rethinking the car ride, people rethinking the place they live, people re even in a small community. Just let me see this happen first. I imagine that that's doable in five years. And that's what we do. We're rooting for you. Thank you. We've got a prize to launch, so we better get at it. I'm now obsessed with the name. <laughs> I, it, it keeps on coming to me. I cannot stop thinking about this name. I have a few ideas ready, but I'm going to keep them to myself. Omer, amazing. Pleasure. Thank you for Thank participating. You for um, huge, huge congratulations. Thank you.